The following video is from April and I finally got a chance to edit it for you. Maybe later on the week there will be time for a tool review of the mulcher that's mentioned in the video. Mentioned but not shown. So hopefully we can do that because we have quite a bit of mulch to make. So uh, I guess without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Hello everyone, welcome once again to our permaculture resort garden. If you're new to this garden, this is where we exclusively play with permaculture principles and the, um, the material here is basically uh, from a closed loop system, meaning we're not bringing in compost from the home improvement center, but we're actually making our own compost, building our own soil and using it here, including if you notice we finally have wood chips or mulch now. It's much uh, request. It's something that's been requested by some of our viewers that we put wood chips here, and we finally have some after doing some major trimming of the side yard. And um, to save on time, I finally bit the bullet and got an electric wood chipper. So electric anything is something that I've always been hesitant about because I didn't think it will have enough torque nor did I think that the motor will last very long. So um, for the cost of the wood chipper and what we needed to do, even if it broke after that one day, it was, it was well worth it. We have, more, we have more sticks to run through the wood chipper to have more wood chips for this area. So that's, uh, that's gonna be uh, really good to have that electric wood chipper. What is so significant about wood chips? Uh, Basically, wood chips help in building soil. Underneath us is clay, and in here, in our permaculture garden, it's going to help in many ways. The first way is, since we have a slope, it's going to soften any water that we, we, we put here. And since we want to put water quickly with a, with a nozzle, uh, it will soften it, it will diffuse it, and allow it to permeate underneath. Uh, conversely, if we didn't have this, then we'll have to water it very slowly, let the water slowly go in, which is why we started building terraces so that the water just doesn't pick up speed and run down all the, and end up at the bottom and in addition create erosion. So diffusion of water is one uh, positive aspect of mulch. The other aspect of mulch is that it will create a nice protective blanket over the future cities of all the beneficial things that go into soil building. So with mulch, it will retain the water that all the beneficial um, beings need in order to start building soil. So those include um, microbes like bacteria, the bigger organisms like insects um, where we can see over there the pill bugs working to break down the mulch here and in other parts of the garden the pill bugs we concentrate on the negative aspects of them uh, eating our sprouts and such so in permaculture we're actually looking at the positive benefits of everything or entity so instead of seeing that the pill bugs do damage, we see that they eat things and turn things into pill bug manure, which then become part of the soil that we're trying to build where the plants will grow from and with. Um, so the other thing about mulch is that it protects the soil building organisms from UV light. I think that's something that people don't talk too much about is UV and the intensity of the sun uh, hindering soil building organisms. So when we have plants like this foti that's coming down and creating uh, protection from the sun, it acts as a type of mulch for the, the organisms to build. So now we have mulch and now we have a faster way to build soil as opposed to no mulch and just bare clay. Um, that's Soil is not going to be built with bare soil and clay. So now we have our mulch 
And what we started to do was we harvested compost and basically scattered compost around our mulch. Compost has that bact the microorganisms in it, the bacteria, the earthworms, the pill bugs, and their eggs and, and whatnot. So we scattered around just to speed things along. So compost is a good catalyst to speed things along. And today um, we'll use some more compost that we've harvested. We've harvested in the last few days 10 gallons worth of compost. So now we have 10 gallons worth of really good soil. And maybe this year, instead of it being a passive garden here, as it has been in the past, where we just put plants here and see how they do, with, with good soil, maybe we'll get something that we can harvest. Um, we're going to plant some more peppers here. We're going to plant some collard greens here and see how that comes and turns um, turns out for us. So today we'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll put some compost in. I don't know if you can see, see that area, that bed there where we created it earlier in the year. We'll put some compost and we'll transplant some. Uh, where are the peppers? I think they're near me right here. Some of these, let's see, Hemo togarashi peppers. We'll transplant them in there and then um, we'll put some compost in this area here and we'll uh, plant our collard greens once they get bigger. And then um, at the towards the end of the video we'll do a quick tour and see the newest members of the permaculture resort garden. And if I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video the the reason this is called a, a resort garden is because for many of these plants, this is the, the last resort for them. Um, either they stay in containers or there's nowhere else to put them in, in the gardens that we have in front, behind, and inside. And one thing real quick, this year I've um, been working really hard on our goal of improving the aesthetics of the backyard and taking plants out of their containers and finding a space for them in the dirt. So we've been doing a lot of that. We've been transplanting a lot of our plants that, are, that have been in containers for uh, at least a few years and into the ground. So there are a few new members. And oh, one other thing, we'll be pruning our uh, Fuji apple. I think we'll start with that. We'll prune our Fuji apple, talk a little bit about it. And then we'll do some soil building or amend that bed there with compost, transplant some of these peppers, and then we'll spread around our, our compost um, in this area so that we can plant more plants and maybe get a harvest this year. So this is our Fuji apple and it's quite young. It's going to be a while before it's going to produce any kind of fruit for us. And with trees, there's a two-way street that happens. The leaves up here will collect energy from the sun and it'll send it down to the roots. And the roots will then grow and collect energy from the soil and send it back up to the leaves. So when it fruits, much of the energy goes to the fruit and not too much happens down below and on top. So with young trees, what we want it, want it to do is we want it to, to build its root system so that it can gather nutrients from the ground. So this is really hard to do for many um, fruit tree owners, especially young fruit trees, including yours truly, is to take off all the beautiful flowers and wait on fruit. This is probably going to be a three year wait. This is a very, very young tree. So we'll, we'll do that first. Okay. Second thing is the growth pattern of our fruit tree. I have a preference to grow a fruit tree that has basically a uh, palm like this grip <laughs> with one branch coming out and then it spreading open. So this is, this is one that we're going to prune off today. We want to keep it open so that it is air can pass through and that it doesn't create protection for uh, good shelter for pests. So we're going to take this off. 
So we'll snip that off. Generally you want to do a 45 degree because that way the water just runs off. But, and then we want to get it as close as possible just to make it nice and clean. But that was a, that's a tight, tight area to get into, so that's harder to do. Here is our secondary compost area, and I've harvested about, let's see, I did two of those earlier, and this is half. So these are about probably three gallons each. So I got about six, seven and a half, maybe eight gallons of compost. And what we did was we took the compost over to our permaculture resort garden and it's in here let's mix it in there so far in here this is native clay and we've added some compost let's get our pepper plants We'll separate these guys out. And then we'll give it a good quick topping of compost. In this bed, we're gonna do our collard greens. So we're gonna move this mulch out of the way and we'll just put the compost right on top and we'll mix it in when we go and transplant our, our uh, collard greens here. The amount of moisture underneath is a good il illustration of how the mulch is working. There's a good amount of moisture down here. We see a lot of earthworms, which is good. We found a June beetle grub. This is gonna be fish food. So the biggest news is that we have mulch in our permaculture resort garden finally, and that our soil is starting to get become, or actually our dirt is starting to become soil, especially if we're gonna be adding in a bunch of compost. I think after three years, we'll probably finally start to see something that's actually uh, harvestable from our permaculture resort garden. And if you'd like to stick around, um, we'll do a, a tour at the end of the video of what's here and what's new here. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. On the opposite side of the permaculture resort garden is our shade garden, which has mostly ornamental plants. Some clivia, this tea plant that we're still babysitting, some purple wandering Jew, a succulent. I can never pronounce it. I think it's spelled A-E-O-N-I-N-U-M. So basically neon, a neonum, a neonum. Vervain, this is a new one to the area. This was grown in a pot for over two years. Uh, it has medicinal uses, but we grow this for fun. It has really pretty little tiny flowers that glisten like tiny fireflies. Pregnant onion, recently learned that this is also perhaps a medicinal plant. I thought I saw it in a medicinal plant catalog. This plant, I know you told me what this is called, but I never forgot never remember what it is. Some Calais that was grown from seed and they're still growing. This is from last year. Over there is a, an agave of some sort that is in a pot and we still need to find a spot for it somewhere. This is a Camilla. 
and um, that way there are some dragon fruit and when we take a closer look over there we can see the bud or well, not the bud but basically all the new growth from last year is pruning lemongrass and some faux tea that's up there that's climbing down we're gonna have to cut some of this back some green onions they've been growing for a long time now and I suppose in bad soil they don't bolt as quickly I think they've been there for at least a year and they're finally getting full size and by now in really good soil they would have bolted nasturtium so everything is pretty much miniaturized in clay soil without nitrogen it's miniaturized like the Brussels sprouts there and then the Morse heading collard greens that's um, miniaturized herbs do well in clay soil this is a wild zatar over there's marijam this is the Jainara procumbens it's also known as longevity spinach um, we have more dragon fruit this one has an interesting look to it. You notice the the blades or the leaves? It's got this weird curvature. They're usually they're usually um, like a Phillips screwdriver, but this one is a little bit more flat. So there are a few of those on this plant. I wonder if it's a mutation. I wonder if we take a cutting and it'll turn into a plant that looks like this. Nasturgeum, this is the mahogany color one. Really pretty deep red color. Over there is ranunculus. That's grown from seed, that's new. Some elephant garlic. I just tried my best to grow fewer of them this year and I just couldn't do it as far as getting rid of every one, so they're here. Greek oregano. Winter savory. Winter savory is new. That's another miniaturized nasturgeum. Sunchokes. This is new. Um, and down here, gladiolus. This is. These guys are one of the original members of the resort garden. Um, they produce so many bulbs that you run out of space for them, and they've been here ever since. And they've been getting bigger and bigger every year. The togarashi that we transplanted, this is Hemo, and it produces pretty well despite the soil being uh, mostly clay. We got some peppers and here's a pod right there. Up here we have some seed grown daylily, so it'll be interesting to see what type of flower they turn into. Daylilies are hybridized, so you never know what you're going to get with them. White sage. new newest member and over here is milkweed um, I can't remember which one it is it's, uh, I, I know what it looks like but I can't remember the scientific name so I'll have to put that in the video later more miniaturized nasturgeum this looks like it's gonna be a coral color one seed grown prickly pear cactus I think it's a uh, year number two now or three um, and then down here we have red Russian kale. And these are just basically grown for soil building. So we're not concerned about, you know, caterpillars turning this plant into caterpillar manure and whatnot. Anything that turns into a leaf and goes into the ground to become soil, um, that's always a bonus. More elephant garlic. This, this plant, I don't know what it is. I probably put some kind of melon seeds here and I forgot. This is comfrey, bocking number 14. And um, I'm finding that it probably will grow better in a more shaded area. So once this gets a little bit more robust, we'll dig it out and perhaps put it over there where there's more shade or maybe on the other side. And to um, answer the question of 
a phantom commenter. Yeah, we have uh, Comfrey and we're experimenting with it. So um, to our phantom uh, commenter, thanks for your comments. I don't know why they're not showing up. Perhaps uh, they're uh, purpose, purposefully phantom in nature. So I, I'm going to respect that and I want to reach out to you and tell you that um, I do read them and in case they weren't purposely phantom. Uh, I'm not deleting them or anything, so so I so I'll try to respond to your questions and video, videos and such if I can remember to. I've been meaning to do that in the last two or three videos. These are green globe artichoke that have been started from seed that was collected from last year. There was a mis miscommunication. My mother-in-law liked some of the purple flowers that I have growing, and I thought she was talking about artichoke. She was talking about the Cape daisies. So we have artichokes, more artichokes. And the plan is to now grow them along our swale here and have the artichoke become a water harvester. So we're not necessarily going after artichoke, but going after the green leaves that it produces and we'll just chop and drop. More elephant garlic. They actually were bulbs that I threw here to let them compost and break down, but they find, they find a way. Elephant garlic finds a way to grow. So, we're, so that's where it is. And finally, this is not a plant or anything, but just an additional compost area. So everything between here and here is um, slowly breaking down for us. And I think those are all the plants that are out here as of April 2017.